Charlie from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, October 29th. Okay, so we had the moon in this Virgo energy here all day, and then the moon in Virgo went void, of course, at 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Libra energy 30 minutes into the day. And of course, if you've been with me for any amount of time, if you've tuned into the Ascension forecast for this week, you would know that when the moon moves into this Libra energy, we're going to have a little bit of a throwback to Libra season to that confusion, that indecision, that teeter-totter that we've been on through eclipse energies. And so it's not going to feel good. It's definitely going to destabilize us, but it's happening in divine timing. Why? Well, we need a little bit of a throwback. We need to be reminded of the confusion and delusion in which we were sitting in. We have to really reflect upon a lot of the shit that hit the fan, so to speak, in order for us with these new eyes, with this new clarity, with this new understanding to kind of analyze what needs to stay, what needs to go. Again, the moon in Libra going to take us into the 31st and late on the 31st, Halloween, the moon is going to be shifting into Scorpio energy, setting us up for this beautiful transition from October to November. And of course, we are jumping all the way into the new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. That is going to officially close the door to eclipse energies that we're still very much under the influence of. And with the moon in Libra giving us this throwback, we are definitely going to be gaining a lot of perspective, a lot of understanding, a lot of clarity on what needs to change, what we have to transform, what we have to provide an ending and a closure to in order to clear the past, so to speak, for us to be building new aspects in our lives. So it's definitely a domino effect that is going to kind of pick up speed here as the moon shifts into this Libra energy. And again, reminder, the moon in Libra, the whole point is to achieve peace, harmony, balance. But of course, we don't achieve those things. We're just striving to achieve those things. What we do experience with the moon in Libra is extremes, extremes between our heart and our head, extremes between our inner realm and our outer realm, and extremes when it comes to our relationship dynamics, especially if something popped off in those particular relationship dynamics throughout eclipse season. So with all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. So again, we shift into this moon in Libra energy 30 minutes into the day. We sit in that particular energy until 424 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our very first moon aspect taking place. And the moon in Libra is going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Venus rules over this Libra energy. And of course, Venus in Sagittarius energy. So we get air and and fire. Something's going to spark here. There's going to be a new spark, new fire, new flame, new creative solution, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Venus is all about her love and her money. And in Sagittarius energy, we're looking for more freedom. We're looking for more fun. We're looking to experiment, to explore different options, different alternatives on what it is that we can be doing differently in our present moment in the physical form in order to create a realm and reality that not only looks good, that feels good as well. So this is going to kind of illuminate for us, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned and financial matters are concerned, where it is that we felt restricted, where it is that we've been feeling backed against the wall and where it is that we're coming up with different solutions, different alternatives in order to provide more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security, more stability, not only in our day-to-day -day lives, not only in our physical realm, but in our relationship dynamics as well. So then we have the sun in Scorpio energy making a very harsh interaction with that north node in Aries energy. And of course, the north node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us in alignment with a new mission, new quest, new purpose. But here's the thing. We are in reflection mode. Again, we're still under the influence of the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy until November 1st. We are in Scorpio season, but we're at the beginning of Scorpio season, which means that there's more reflection back. How did we get here? 
What choices did we make that actually created this shit show in which we're trying to currently escape from? This is a reflection back again with the detective hats on, seeing where it is that we made certain decisions, certain choices out of the wounded ego self that landed us in this situation. And of course, the higher version of self no longer resonates with people, places and things that the old version of self once did. This is going to illuminate for us where it is that we really have no business thinking about the future at this particular point in time when there's so many loose ends of the past that need to kind of be wrapped up, need to be brought to a completion point, need to be a little bit more finalized in order for us to put the past behind us so that it doesn't come back to bite us in the ass when we're finally doing good, when we're finally in a space that is resonating with our higher self. So it's not that we should you know, just close the door on thinking about the future entirely. However, we have to think about the future of our cells, of our realities in order to put it in perspective when we come back to this present moment, who and what needs to stay and needs to go? Who and what is a part of that futuristic dream, vision and goal and who and what is not? This is going to help us again, kind of realize because we are in the particular moon phase at this particular juncture as we're moving into the new moon in Scorpio, we're in an elimination phase. We're in a analyzation an inventory of what is working, what isn't. Who is supporting us? Who isn't? And from these realizations, we can create a list on what we have to close the door upon and who we have to leave in the past. We have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in Cancer energy, a water sign. We have Mars making an awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who of course is retrograde, in Pisces energy another water sign. This is water on water action. However, Saturn brings in a little bit of a reality check. The cancer energy that Mars is sitting in is in preservation mode, in defense mode. We have Saturn, again, retrograde, showing us in our inner realm where it is that we got to boss up, where it is that we have to have a new level of willpower and discipline in order to change the way that we think, the way that we feel, the way that we assert ourselves to go after what it is that we want. And all of this comes down to the Pisces energy that Saturn is currently in, shifting our belief system, what we believe to be true, what we believe we're worthy of, what we believe we're deserving of as far as creating new dreams dreams, new goals, new visions are concerned. Now, Saturn brings in a pumping of the brake energy, right? He's a limiter. He's a restrictor. Mars has ants in his pants, but he's not allowed to kind of take action and make moves to initiate something new because he's in cancer energy, fighting, defending, protecting what it is that he's already built, what it is that he's already created, what it is that is actually working. So first of all, we are in the moon phase right now where we're supposed to be slowing down. We're supposed to be kind of unwinding. We're supposed to be acting as the observer, not initiating, not moving too fast in any particular direction, not pushing us to again, make changes and transformations that are premature. And so there's an element here where it feels like we're being blocked, where we're being put on pause. And of course, that doesn't feel good. However, it is a necessary block, a necessary pause because we need to get our shit together. We don't have patience, but we need to have patience. We need to have a little bit of foresight, but we don't have foresight. We need to kind of see where situations and circumstances need to come to an end, but we don't have the solution on how to do that as of yet. And so this is going to be a little bit of a friction, a little bit of a tension, because there is this want, need, and desire to make dramatic changes, to bust through those challenges and obstacles. But again, we're not being supported in doing that. We will be supported in doing that post new moon in Scorpio. So we sit in that energy for the bulk of the morning. And then early afternoon, the moon in this Libra energy comes into an opposition and a conjunction with the north node of the moon in Aries and the south node of the moon in Libra energy. Again, the nodes of the moon are responsible for the eclipse energies that we were experiencing. We've been on this Aries and Libra axis for the last year and a half, almost two years ish come early 2025. We are at the ending, the closure of this particular karmic chapter. But here's a little bit of a reminder. The North Node in Aries energy is what we have to align with, what we have to pursue. The new, if you will, 
And that Aries energy is forcing us to be a little bit more independent, to get to know thyself in order to heal thyself, in order to protect thyself, in order to bring online the creator abilities. You cannot be a creator of your realm, of your reality, unless you are very, very true to thyself, very much in your authenticity, very much in your mental and emotional power. That all has to be in alignment. We're in the year of eight. This is about walking the walk and talking the talk. And of course, you're not going to be gifted creator abilities until you're put through the ringer, until you have those particular exams, prove that you are responsible and capable enough of actually bringing those abilities online. Now, the south node in Libra energy is what we've already perfected. This is coming from you know, this current lifetime is coming from previous incarnations. We perfected codependency. We've perfected playing small in order to make other people feel a little bit bigger, a little bit special. We've perfected dimming our own light in order to make other people feel like the spotlight is on them, even though we are choosing a co-starring supporting role to other people when we should be the star of our own lives. We have already perfected the people pleasing. We have already perfected wearing the fake facade. We have already perfected doing all of the things, the shallow things to do in order for other people people's thoughts, opinions, suggestions to have more weight than our own. We've already perfected that. We're looking to put it behind us. We're looking to make some progress in the path, in the direction of independence, of leadership, of only getting to know thyself so that you can stand in your own power so that you can bring the creator abilities online so that you can stop dimming your light to make other people feel special, more important when again, it's their job to do their own work. So here we have the moon in Libra energy sitting on top of conjuncting the south node in Libra energy. The emotions here are going to be a little bit conflicting because the natural disposition, the default programming in our ego selves wants us to revert back to what is tried, tested and true wants us to revert back to what is familiar, what is comfortable, wants us to revert back to some of the situations and circumstances that many of us have worked our asses off in being able to move away from. And so there's going to be this pull back to bad habits, back to bad relationships, back to bad positions where we're not standing in our power, where we're not putting our own wants, needs and desires at the top of the list. Meanwhile, the moon sitting across from the North Node in Aries energy is asking us to balance ourselves out. Okay, so we may not be running backwards, we may not be running forwards, but what we need to be doing is at least standing very tall, very powerful in the present moment, in the here and now, in our own damn energy. Again, the moon in Libra striving for peace, harmony, balance. Are we going to get those things? Well, we're going to try. And this is the first opportunity here with the moon in Libra for us to, again, kind of see where there is a pull back, where there is a pull forward, and where we have to double down on anchoring and grounding our energy into this present moment. So then the moon in this Libra energy is going to be making a positive interaction with the sun in Scorpio energy. So again, anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together in any kind of way, there's going to be an aha moment, a realization, an epiphany on what we need to do, what we need to pursue, what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire. So the moon in Libra energy, again, kind of staying in the shallow end of our thoughts, of our emotions. We are again, analyzing relationship dynamics. Dynamics. We are again analyzing where it is in our lives that there's a particular area of life, crazy, chaotic, so super out of whack. And the sun shining a bright light in the Scorpio energy, first of all, is showing us what it is that we truly desire. We desire peace. We desire harmony. We desire balance. We don't want craziness. We don't want chaos. We don't want conflict. And so we're recognizing what it is that we desire. Equally, we are recognizing the fear, the doubt, the insecurity that's preventing us from actually going after what it is that we desire. Why? Well, because the moon in Libra has us more concerned about what other people are going to think. God forbid they think that we're the bad guy. God forbid that we only put our own wants, needs and desires ahead of their own and we stop having weak ass boundaries in order to be at their beck and call. We don't want to rock the boat with the Libra energy. On the other hand, 
the Scorpio energy, we're ready to flip tables. We're ready to do what needs to be done in order to bring an ending and a closure to the craziness, to the chaos, to some relationship dynamics that, again, we've outgrown, that we have no business holding on to, especially no business continuing to pour into if we want to bring new goals, new dreams, new visions online. So the moon is then going to semi-square Mercury. Mercury, again, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is in Scorpio energy. So we're thinking both with our intellect and with our intuition. We are tunnel vision in on examining people's energy. Again, words are just words. Actions a little bit better than words, but words are just words. And a lot of people talk a lot of shit. But if you are operating from your mind's eye, you're going to be able to see right through that. You're going to pick up on the vibes. You're going to pick up on the energy. And so, you know, a semi square is highlighting where our heart space and our head space are not on the same page, mostly because the moon in Libra enjoys living in the shallow end, enjoys living in the fake facade, enjoys putting on the mask and just playing house. Well, you know, at the end of the day, they're crying in the shower. They're having all the arguments that they wish that they could have had to the person in the present moment, but instead they just smiled. They just brushed it off like it wasn't bothering them. And they're going to kind of fall asleep crying or angered that they didn't have the voice that they needed to have in order to actually advocate for themselves. So Mercury, who's all about communication, all about understanding, all about, you know, the information that we're picking up from the world around us, we're seeing through the fake facade, we're seeing through people's words, we're seeing the actual energy of the situation and circumstance of the person. And sometimes that's very sobering. And sometimes that doesn't feel good because now you're being challenged. Do you take people, situations, circumstances at face value, moon and Libra, or do you trust your gut? Do you trust the vibes that you're picking up on? Even though it doesn't make logical, practical sense, even though these people, the situation, the circumstance isn't giving you the information that you're, uh, you know, essentially picking up on what part of you are you willing to trust? At the end of the day, our heart and our head not on the same page. Our heart wants to keep in the shallow end. Our headspace, Mercury, needs to do a deep dive, needs to understand the inner workings, the motives, if you will, of the people that we have in our day-to-day -day lives. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Sag energy, semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, with Pluto, the great transformer, who, of course, is at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy, giving us the last couple of weeks to do a clean sweep in our physical realms, completely demolishing, destroying the old structures, the old foundations of relationship dynamics, people, places and things that, again, the old version of self had built and created that, again, the higher self, the new version of self no longer resonating with. So this is going to intensify our heart space because Venus is all about the heart space, all about her worth, all about her value, all about what makes her happy, what makes her feel safe, what makes her feel secure. She's in the Sag energy. Independence and freedom feels really good right now. Experimenting with different alternatives of how it is that we can run throughout our day. Very, very appealing. However, this Sag energy is like ADHD squirrel on steroids, okay? We're not focused at all. We're bouncing around. The energy is not stable. What this is going to do is, first of all, give us this over-exaggerated state of emotion. Not that the emotions aren't real, not that there isn't a foundation or a basis for us to be feeling the way that we're feeling. However, it's over-exaggerated because of the Sag energy. Jupiter rules over the Sag energy. He magnifies whatever it is that we're thinking, whatever it is that we're feeling. Pluto intensifies where we're not happy, where there's a struggle, where there's a conflict, where it is that we're not feeling so good in order for us to realize what needs to die. Okay, so we're going to get wound up with this particular interaction. We are so confused on what it is that we need to be doing in order to create the peace, the harmony, the balance in our physical realms that we want so freaking dearly. But our connections with the people, with the world around us are changing, whether we like it or not. 
And because Pluto is all about power, we're starting to realize where other people are trying to control us or manipulate us or control or manipulate the situation, the circumstances that we just happen to be involved in. We're also going to realize if you're kind of keeping your own self in check here, where it is that we have a little bit of a tendency to want to control or manipulate certain people, places or things in our favor. But here's the thing seems like a lot of energy, seems like a lot of effort that we're not necessarily uh, willing to pour into as of right now. And so the darker parts of those that haven't been doing the work, jealousy, uh, possessiveness, manipulation, control, lies, all of these things, that's going to rise to the surface. We have a very good opportunity in Scorpio season to see people's true colors, even if they can't see them within themselves. And especially if we're trusting our gut and we're relying on the subtle energy environment instead of the materialistic environment, again, people can say words that don't matter. People can do actions that, again, have a different agenda. But when you are true to yourself and you know who you are and you're stable and grounded in your energy, you can see through people's motivations and intentions. You can see why people are acting the way that they're acting. You can see people's true colors. So this is going to be a little bit sobering, if you will, a little bit of a reality check, not going to feel good because now we're seeing people with our mind's eye, our true eye, if you will. And once you see that, you can't unsee it. Once you know, you can't unknow. So the moon goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who happens to be in this cancer energy, very attached to the past, romanticizing the past, if you will, in defense mode, trying to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created. Here's the thing. Just when we get this reality check, just when we're starting to see people through a different lens, seeing their real, true, honest colors, we start looking back at old situations, old circumstances, old interactions, old engagements. And we're thinking, were they always like this? Or did we just not see it? Is this just something that just happened? How could we, how could we be in situations and circumstances, relationship dynamics, friendship dynamics, and not see the true colors of this individual that has just essentially slapped me across the face? Like I can't unsee it. So now we're looking back. We're trying to reflect upon it. We're trying to romanticize and kind of, I'm going to say, minimize the shock value that we're currently going through in realizing that guess what, some people that we thought were for us aren't for us at all. Some people that we thought were loving and encouraging are just manipulating and controlling us to their advantage. And once you know, you can't unknow. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Libra energy making an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde in Taurus energy reminder. Uranus's whole point in being retrograde in Taurus energy is to illuminate where it is that we have a death grip on the old, even though that we know the old is no longer serving us, no longer supporting us, no longer needed for our growth, for our evolvement. So why are we holding on to it? Okay, so Uranus gives us a perspective shift. However, the moon in Libra is going to put on this fake ass lens where we're like trying to talk ourselves out of being done with certain people, being done with certain situations and circumstances. Again, trying to smooth things over. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to admit to ourselves that guess what? We're actually the problem holding on to a dead horse, holding on to dead weight here. Why? Because the minute that you admit that you're the problem, you realize that you have the power. You then have to, again, be accountable enough to do what you have to do, the hard things in order to kind of cut people out, put people in their place so that, again, you can rise up in your power without all of these manipulating forces trying to push you into being someone that you're actually not. So emotionally speaking, we may be a little bit confused. Maybe we're a little bit delulu, if you will. We don't want the actual truth of the matter. We know it. We see it. We're trying to, you know, romanticize it. We're trying to make it less intense. We're trying to make it less harsh. But again, that fake facade, that shallow end can only exist for so long. This is trying to illuminate for us where it is that we're running away from the clarity, the facts that we have essentially been praying for. All of this is a beautiful, divinely scripted setup for us to realize, again, 
where people are changing, where certain people, places and things have got to end, have got to go and setting us up for the empowerment energy that is going to come when we go move into this new moon in Scorpio energy, the changes that we need to make, the transformations that are currently taking place will not be anchored in until after the new moon in Scorpio. Thus, why we're in observation mode. Thus, why we are in a pause and holding pattern. Thus, why we are again on this GD teeter totter that we have been on through Libra season, starting with that first eclipse. And this is going to help us put things in a perspective, even if it's a not so nice perspective, in order for us to realize what needs to die, what needs to end, what needs to grow, what needs to be strengthened, as far as this pivotal point of change and transformation goes.